93.10.17 Once again I am back on Mist Island, having completed a, le a lengthy sojourn through several of my ages. My trip... The trip itself was not an in as inspiring as I had hoped. The Selenitic Age was especially disturbing. But has it not always been so? The first time I linked to the Age, its uninhabited landscape was shaking with tremors. At the time, I felt it was because the energy of the Age was unfocused, as if it were at war with itself. Stability finally came. But even after it did, I truly, I never truly felt comfortable there. I missed the more natural balance of ages like Channelwood. Perhaps that is the lesson to take home with me. The Dene too have faced much turmoil in their history. Their lives have been unsettled enough. Perhaps I should be striving to offset the energy that already exists within our civilization by providing it with a more stabilized environment in which to grow and an environment in which the natural equilibrium of the world serves as a counterpoint to the upheavals of civilization. The more I consider it, the more I wonder if I should make nature the foundation of this new age. Worlds like Channel would attain equilibrium quite easily, primarily because of one reason. Nature encourages mutual dependence. As one life withers and dies, it provides nourishment so that another might live. Plants become food for other animals, and the waste products animals cannot absorb become nutrients to sustain the other plants. So long as nothing intrudes to upset this balance, nature can maintain itself indefinitely. An interesting metaphor to set as an example for my people. I think I will confer with Catherine on this, pro on this subject, her... Ages always exhibit symbiosis more dramatically than mine. Perhaps she should help me write this new age. 93.10.24 I am so tired. I can barely think right now. But I will force myself to stay focused, for I have not written anything in days. The moment I linked back to Denis, I was besieged with requests for my assistance. Master Timon wanted to consult over which stone cutters were worth salvaging, and did I think the rock in this new age would be difficult to sound? Oma and Essel needed my opinion about a new history they had uncovered. Did they hold off on starting his translation, or would paper supplies be scarce in the new age? There were so many questions needing answers. I barely had time to see Catherine. She, of course, laughed at my dilemma, saying that I had no one to blame but myself. After all, I was the one who encouraged the Denis to start over. Naturally, they would look to me to keep them moving in the right direction. Unless some other force stepped in to change that view. Her words made me realize a fundamental principle I had thus far been ignoring. All this time, I had been debating whether to make energy or nature the underlying framework of this age, but there was another equation to consider. An age based solely on the future motion of energy will face constant upheavals, like most likely at the cost of tranquility. And the age, an age based solely on mutual dependence of nature can become so balanced over time, it may cause... It may cease to tolerate change. Yet to continue to grow as people, Dani civilization needs both. Occasional upheavals followed by periods of balanced stability. I have seen such situations occur naturally on several of my ages. Each time it was because I centered the writing around some dynamic force that I had decided to make prevalent in the age. Since uh, such forces allowed the balance between forward motion and mutual dependence to fluctuate. As one concept takes precedence, the other recedes until another force surfaces to change things. As Catherine's insightful comment reminded me, dynamic forces spur change. I am too tired to think more on this tonight. 
Hopefully in the morning, my thoughts will coalesce. 93.10.25 Catherine surprised me today. Apparently, while I was off revisiting my ages, she linked to Mist by herself. She did not say so, but I could tell that her visit had been painful. More than ever now, I am convinced that we must find a place to begin anew ourselves. Perhaps when I have written this new age for the Denis, I will put some thought into where Catherine and I might live. 93.10.28 I cannot believe I did not see it before. All this time, I have been struggling to describe the perfect age for the Denis. I have considered and then rejected several underlining concepts which I felt might best set the course for their future, as if I alone should determine how Denis civilization will grow. In my own way, I have become as egotistical as my father. In truth, I owe this realization to Catherine. Sensing my indecision about the new age, she led me on a walk around Denis. Salvaging efforts were well underway, with teams of people scouring the ruined harbor district. As I watched my Denis kinsmen decide, deciding which parts of their culture to retain, I realized they do not need me to determine their future. They are quite capable of setting its course by themselves, regardless of what age I write. This realization has opened my eyes to the best way of approaching my task. I no longer need to worry about which underlying concept, energy, nature, or dynamic forces I should make prevalent in the age. Rather, I must strive to include them all. I must strive... I must write a balance of systems into the descriptive book, enough so that the Denis people will constantly be challenged to attain their ultimate potential. As Grandmother often pointed out to me when we spoke about ages back on Mist, balanced systems sti uh, stimulate civilizations. At last, I feel I am ready to begin writing this age. Indeed, I am eager to begin and have already come up with the perfect name. I know Grandmother would be would have loved it. Of course, Catherine could also uh, could tell the moment I turned to her that I had finally found my starting point. I babbled on excitedly for some time before I noticed the smile she was hiding. When I saw it enough to grow suspicious, she handed me one of my oldest age books. She must have picked it up when she linked back to Mist. Seeing the name Jnanin emblazoned on the book cover, I could only shake my head. This one age, the one age I never got around to revisiting, was the one that might have helped me the most. How foolish was I to have completely forgotten it. I think, after I have visited this, wor this work, I should take one finally... Tr after I finish this work, I should take one final, final trip, if only to restore an old fool's memories. Oh, that's the end there. There we go. That's what happens when I remember how to right-click. <laughs> and that's how I do stuff without moving the camera around and everything. There we go. I wonder if that's where that system came into place for the first time. That's a, a universal system for 3D games like this one, where you want to be able to move stuff around without moving the screen with it. Is the ability to right-click and then move stuff around with the mouse. And this is old enough that I almost wonder if this was like the first game to do that. But there are there are other Mist-like games that are lost to time, either the direct competitors or just similar games at the time. We'll see if I ever get around to those ones. I'm game for it, except for I'm not a, not particularly psyched about the process of making them work. That's not very fun. <laughs> oh, this, this really goes way down. Oh. Where have I gone? Oh, I'm behind the plant now. Is there a path over here? What? So I can point it at something. What? Lagoon water. I got a subtitle. Should I point at the should I point it at the lagoon water, I guess? Is it Did it actually move or was I just looking around with it? 
Didn't seem like something that would actually magnify my sight at all. What a weird discovery. Okay, can I go down more? Yes. There's a lot of pointing in various directions to be doing in this one, because, uh... Stuff I missed could be in any direction. I'm wondering if I, I must be able to extend a bridge up there at some point. Can I go onto that rock? I can. Oh, look at you! That thing's a nightmare, but that thing was kind of cute. It's like a turtle lizard thing. Oh, look at that little guy. Turtle rat lizard thing. Something. Why is your Why is your house a nightmare? Why is- why is your house a nightmare? Just look into that. Okay, some of these feel like they're gonna be dangerous. Is it gonna tr is it gonna catch something? Squee chirps. Is that the subtitle for the sound it's making, I wonder? Look at you, little guy. Are you happy? Did I do it good? Can I go in there and chuck a chit look around? Hey little guy. Are you eating, I guess? You're cool. I mean you're cool looking, but am, am I supposed to do something? Hey. I think I'm just I think that's it for now. I don't really have like an inventory or a goal yet. Well, I'm ignoring my goal somewhat. Oh, see you later, little guy. Oh yeah, you can continually hear him in the background now. Hopefully he doesn't get killed or something by the weird nightmare plants. They're probably fine. I'm digging the color, by the way. It's just a bright, colorful, pretty area. Okay. Oh, the gate. I thought I might rotate the building or something. Uh, that... Oh, these are all gate controls. That sounds, that looks dangerous. I could take somebody's foot off or something. What an uncomfortably cramped little building, huh? Anything over here? There's a lever here. There's a door that opens. So that'll get me to the other side. So, so far, I think I'm guessing this game is less mist and more riven. Judging by how, like, open and multi-pathed everything seems so far. Because mist was like a tiny of... It was a series of, like, really tiny puzzle worlds to explore. This one still might be a series of worlds, but... This already seems like it's going to be more expansive than any of the individual locations in Mist. That's what that caught me. That's what caught me by surprise about Mist was that it felt like this like surprisingly segmented and all over the place game. Maybe she. Maybe it's not a creepy horror like eyes blotted out thing. Maybe they just didn't get around to painting the eyes yet. Yeah. Optimism. It just didn't finish the painting yet. The creepy painting. Maybe I should look at it. Nope. Hello there. I hear a fly of some or a fly like creature, and this thing looks a lot like a Venus fly trap. A victory battle. <laughs> Oddly sticking out of a giant crustacean thing, giant nautilus looking shell with tentacles, which is like not... Hopefully, does it have control of those? Because that'd be terrifying. Uh. What have I done? That's strangely off-putting. Okay. Hey there. Mortar and pestle. And... 
Whatever this is. Is that a plant growing out of there or is that a straw? <laughs> Big silly rock hammer. They seem to be taking the weight of these, I would assume, eggs. My only real point of interaction seems to be the ability to connect these to each other. And I'm not really sure how to feel about that. Wow, you're... Well... At some point you deserve to die. Stupid <laughs> The stupid fly just went back in! Are you for real? I don't think I can, I can do anything. Yeah, I think this just plays out how it goes. Why would you do that? Yeah, at some point you're just gonna die. Oh well. What do you look like? Are you a light? No. A magnet? Is that why it's coiled around? Alright. How about you? Ooh. Do you open? There's clearly a window going deeper in. This that looks like a lever over there. Can I go around you? Yes. Oh, would I be threatened by this? Because I feel like I should. Um. Huh. Now we know that it's apparently an elevator. Neat. And now I'm in the elevator shaft. Oh, there's a ladder in- a little ladder in here. This is largely just- this is large. oh, there's- You can see, like, internal gears. Well, those are trippy. I feel like I'm about to get killed. Like I'm gonna hit myself with an elevator. Okay. Wow, there's a lot going on in here. Huh. How'd you get all these holes in your metal, by the way? seems dangerous that you've apparently got this weak metal that has this many gaps in it. Alright, well, so so we don't know how to run this thing yet, so let's get out of here. We don't really know how it works, but I might be able to change... There might be like a code to insert essentially, or something I can do that might lead to like... Being able to go to, to a different floor maybe, or change something about how the elevator works. That's a real trip. Not sure what the point of that part is, aside from the way they could, like, horribly hurt you by slamming into you or something. You can see all the little broken inner parts from down there. Dare I try to ride it? Alright. Get you closed. And I haven't saved for a while, so... Uh... Let's see. Willy Wonka spoilers. Doesn't fit. Wonka, 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 Dunka. All right, Wonka spoilers. We don't know how stable this game is yet, so I should really be saving it every now and then just in case something it crashes because of a weird install problem or something. That spinny thing just seems incredibly dangerous, though. The way that the a bunch of weird things that are sticking out spin around this thing every time it moves. You think you just somebody would get caught in it and they'd be in some danger. Uh 
Hello. Atrix? Is that you? Come to rescue your book so soon? Not yet, old friend. Not yet. Oh, I think I can do stuff now. Okay. An egg thing came up. Can I get this open? Oh. Uh-oh. Uh. That's a prabble. Is he gone? I seem to have found him, despite not really hunting for him that hard. Is this- oh, this is how I go back down? Ah, it's the same thing as the lever. I was hoping that it'd be a way of rotating it, but evidently not. That thing seems so dangerous. And I don't know what service it perps. Uh, it, what what service it perps? What uh, purpose it serves? This spinny thing that's gonna hurt someone. All right, well, we'll come back to that. I guess I found him. So he's got a... Column of jointing! He's got a specific thing against, uh... Against, uh, Atrus, apparently, and we're just swept up in that. A lot of weighing things against other things going on here. There's a hammock here. Ooh, a book. I have done it. I have used his swirling linking book to follow him. I touched my palms to its gl to a glowing panel and felt the tingling begin. There was a sudden, sickening lurch inside my stomach. Then I fell into the page. This is interesting. Give me a second, just grabbing the note. So I'm looking at the manual of this game. The manual of this game says, It's coming back to me now. Why I came to these worlds, how long I have been waiting. I remember who I am, and who my enemies are. Your sons, Atrus, Cirrus, and Akinar. Do you know what they did? I re the reason why I'm rereading that quote is because I'm looking at it. I assumed it was me. I thought that was the protagonist. Like, this, maybe the protagonist fell into mist with amnesia, and then, like, in Mist 3, he regains his memory of what happens, much like in, like, Witcher 3. Like, oh, now I remember who I am. Uh and re-realizes re re old struggles or something. Uh, I can tell that it's this dude, because everyone in everyone in Mist seems to have distinctive handwriting that's specific to them, and that's how you're supposed to recognize who's writing at times. Uh, this dude has the weird thing where he, he is, his lowercase a looks a lot like a capital A, like a lot like a capital A, and I noticed that, I recognized that from the writing in the manual. So that message from the manual about this apparent, this apparent plotting of revenge, this person that's been wronged by Cirrus and Akinar and what they've done or something, uh, that apparently is not my, the protagonist like I would originally guess. It's apparently the guy who wrote this journal, which I assume is the same person we just saw up at the top of the elevator. If it's somebody else, then that's slightly confusing, but I'm going to guess it's him. Because yeah, the writing appears to be the same. This has happened before. I know it. It happened the first time I came to this place, when I followed his murdering sons from Nar... Narayan. It happened when I used his hidden books. When it happened... When I... And it happened when I finally opened the machine, right before the fog first ate my mind. The fog didn't find me this time. When I opened my eyes, I was alone in a room. I was standing in the home of my betrayers. I couldn't move. I was afraid. I thought they'd know that I had come and would be waiting for me. 
and just like they had waited just like they had waited inside this very tusk. I was afraid they would tie me up again, like the poison snakes would that that the poison snakes would strike. But the silence was unbroken, the whole house was still, and without really knowing what I did, I started to search every room, every floor, every cabinet. I found his journals, Atrus's never-ending jur uh, journals. I found the book that brought me back to this world, the lesson world he calls Jnamin. <laughs> oh, wow, that's hard to read. Oh, Tamira, my love? How long have I been trapped here? How much of my life has been eaten by the fog? The face I see in the lagoon isn't one I remember even ever wearing. It's so much older, so much more savage. But it is me. It is Saavedro. And I remember what, I what they did. How they led my people to death. I have returned several times now to Tomaha, Tomahamra. <laughs> I forgot. Toma, Toman, Tomana? Is it Tomana? I haven't said it enough times to have it ingrained enough. So, so when it's spelled weirdly, I can't make out uh, it for sure. I am searching for some sign of his sons. I was certain they would run back to their father, but so much time has passed. So many years in which to forget about my people. Is that what happened, Atrus? Safe in your beautiful new home, enjoying life with your dear wife and family? Did you become so busy envisioning new worlds that you forgot the ones you'd already created? I must be careful. I must not let them know that I am free. I will read what journals I can find to figure out where his two sons are hiding. And when I've found the sons again, when I've got the whole family together... I'll bring them down. Atrus and his family will suffer. The way I have suffered for years. He seems to have a page numbering or date. A dating system that is based around what looks like essentially tree branches. Sirius and Akana are not in Toman, Tamana. Every day I become more and more convinced Atrus' sons are not there. What happened, Atrus? Did you grow tired of them the way you grow tired, grew, the way you tired of Narayan, no, Narayan? Did you abandon them the way you abandoned my people behind your shield? It does not matter. I can still take revenge against their father, now that I am no longer stuck in Janin. I can avenge all the dead in my world. I have already reopened his other books. I have begun making changes in those worlds, using his own lessons against him. There is still much more work to be done, but eventually I will lure him into this... Into this tusk? Does he keep saying tusk? I think. I will find some way... Oh wait, there, isn't there a giant tusk-looking building in the distance on this, on this world? I will find some way to make him follow me here from Tomana. For now, I will concentrate on the orbiter. It is not a natural part of this world. The material that creates it is like nothing I've ever, I've seen. It reminds me just a little of the shield. And it is the same material. And if it is the same material, it cannot be damaged. Or perhaps I can damage the other devices. No, it cannot be true. Surely his journals deceive me. He says he's brought them back. He says he's given the Dani brethren new life. But how? How can one man have so much power? How can one man's writings reawaken a dead world? I don't know what this means. By all that is sacred, Tamra, what can it mean? It doesn't change a thing. I can still continue as I planned. I can still seek revenge for my people. I will make my enemies suffer. By the weaving, Tamra, this changes everything. Everything or nothing. Make up your mind. Ooh. Now we have information about what to do with the library. I mean, not library. The elevator stuff. So the bottom ones have to be down, middle, middle, or up. It looks like middle. I think there's three tiers. If we, if we count them one, two, three, top to bottom, it's one, two, two. 
or top to bottom would be three two two actually. Anyway, the gears I have to line the gear up with the one that doesn't have a spot in it, and I have to attach that one thing. I have found a way to reprogram his scanning device. It requires scavenging parts from another mechanism in the tusk, but I think the gears I leave can still be operated by hand. It is finished. Ol is ready for Atrus's arrival. Tonight I will sleep among the ghosts. Then tomorrow I will link into Tamana. When I link out, I'll be carrying this book. May the spirits of my people serve to guide me in this. I've got your book now. I stole it for myself.